We're going to Bill, Patriot, Mark, Mark, Solomon, and others. Solomon's calling from Brazil. Please have a quick question or comment for Governor Jesse Ventura. His new book out in paperback, an international bestseller, Don't Start Revolution Without Me. Don't Start Revolution Without You. You're definitely out there standing up against torture, the police state, the New World Order in many ways, and for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. What do you think of uh, Chrysler going under? Now GM, uh, they're going to give them bailout money to move to China and Brazil. The Wall Street Journal's now reporting. I mean, this globalization, this NAFTA and GATT, this has butchered the hell out of our country. Well, uh, again, uh, you know, you got to see it happen before, you, you know, I, I, I don't know the economy well enough to know whether the bailout is proper or not. I don't, uh, you know, because both sides have voted for it. You know, well, that's when, when you know it's when, bad. Well, yeah, well, when Bush was in, he, they all voted for the bailout. And then Obama comes and they continue to vote for the bailout. Is the bailout the answer? I don't know. But there's nothing we can do about it because they are our elected officials and they run the country. So I guess we're going to live or die by the decisions that they make because, after all, we elected them, didn't we? So what happens as things start falling apart even more and both parties, on every issue, 80, 90 percent of the people want to go one way, which is always with the Bill of Rights and Constitution. The people actually, on average, in polls get it right, but the politicians are all together with the offshore banks. I mean, this is coming to a well, head. Again, it, all, it still comes down to us. When you strip everything away from it all, we elect them. I've been fighting for it for, I mean, I, I voted for John Anderson way back in the 80s. Well, you know about the you know, money, I've though. You know about the money. These parties, my entire adult life. I understand and, and that, Alex. As long as we keep electing Democrats and Republicans, this is what you're going to get. No, I understand that, Jesse, and you're right about the whole left-right control paradigm and special interest owning both. But you had celebrity and were a sharp, intelligent guy, and and barely won. Uh, and then they kind of figured out how to block people like you in the future. It's the money. The people know both parties are shot, but but the money only pushes the establishment candidate. I mean, what do people do? Just vote for th uh, for third party no matter what? Yeah. I guess that, yeah. Do it as a protest vote. I do it. I go there, and when there's any in election, I go there, and I pick out any candidate who's not a Democrat or Republican. That's and what I, I do. Vote, and I protest vote. To me, if you go there and pick them out, then you're, play, you're playing their game. Ultimately, they still get to be in charge because they got you to vote for them. And I'm not saying you, Alex, as an individual. I mean everybody out there. No, I understand. Let's jam a call in. Bill in Connecticut, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hi, Bill. Good. How are you? Real good. Hey, I got a question for, for both of you. Um, it's pertaining to... Legitis the legitimacy of Barack Obama being the president. And I'm just kind of surprised that nobody talks about it at all. Well, that's because and the media has chosen to to focus in on that early on instead of all the other things that were wrong with Obama that we can prove all his lying about wiretapping and torture and police state and wars and special interest. They always focus on that because you can't prove it one way or the other. Jesse Ventura, what's your take on the whole birth certificate thing? I, you know, I, I'm not. I, I guess I haven't paid much attention to it at all. I, 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 you know, to me, how could they? How could he not be a citizen? Well, McCain was born in the Panama Canal zone before there were bases there. That's another question. How could both candidates have well, questionable lineage? But the point is, they come from parents who are from here. I mean, if they happen to be working abroad, that doesn't mean you're not an American citizen, does it? Well, his mom was from here. The, the, the dad was a communist from uh, Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe you can be the ambassador to Kenya, Stan. Well, all the whole country will be run like Kenya. No, Stay I there. Back in a, one minute. Back in one minute. Ambassador to Cuba. Better surfing. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today.
Hello friends, this is Alex Jones. I've told you for a long time it's important to be self-sufficient. And today that's more important than ever. We need to be independent and food and water is the key. You'll never have to stand in a bread line if you have your own bread. You'll never have to go to the Superdome and beg for FEMA to take care of your family in any emergency if you simply prepare. No one is going to take care of your family in the final equation but you. You know eFoodsDirect.com is still able to ship storable food that's safe from E. coli, salmonella, genetic alteration, or Chinese imports. And they do it at almost half the cost of last year's grocery prices. Call 1-800-409-5633 or on the web go to eFoodsDirect.com. Visit eFoodsDirect.com and look over the fine list of high quality, freeze dried and dehydrated foods they have to offer. Watch the free videos, look at their online catalog or give them a call at 1-800-409-5633. Again, 800-409-5633 or on the web at eFoodsDirect.com. Take action today. The first step is getting storable food. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Okay, Governor Jesse Ventura will be with us till about uh, 18 after. End of the next segment. We're taking your phone calls right now. Patriot in Wisconsin. You're on the air with Jesse Ventura. On the air with us talking about his new bestseller, Don't Start the Revolution Without Me, out in paperback. Go ahead, Patriot. Hi, guys. Um, you were talking about being uh, ambassador to Cuba, but if we're having relations with countries like Cuba and North Korea or China or Iran, doesn't that sort of legitimize their governments? Well, what? Their governments don't exist? What are well, you going to pretend that... That uh, these countries have be them communist, that somehow they don't exist, so we just ignore them and they'll go away. Come well, on, get in the real world. They're communists. They're, that's what we got. You, you know, there's no thing in poker. Sometimes you got to play the hand you're dealt. Do I support communism? No, but they do exist. Look, and, look, and, this and you argument. Can't shut yourself off from that fact and pretend they don't. Let me throw some at the caller and, and then and then get his take and then yours, Governor. Look. Detente always stops wars. It's always good to try to talk to somebody. Absolutely. Bloodshed should be the last thing. I mean, take our founding fathers. They talked for 10 years before they declared uh, you know, independence in 1776 against the tyranny of the king. And then you're in the right when you've tried. But Iran, we overthrew Iran in 53. Our government stages terror attacks. That's in the news today. I mean, Iran doesn't deserve to be attacked. And, and by being mean to Iran, that makes them get more hardline people in power like Ahmed Dinajid. Comments, caller. Well, yeah, I understand that. I'm not necessarily talking about going to war, but I'm talking about something like uh, when the communists took over in the Soviet Union, when the communists took over in China, do you think it's a good idea to have uh, uh, business relationships with them, or shouldn't we sort of try to uh, well, put embargoes on Well, them, we, we've been doing business with China. We've been doing business with Vietnam. And uh, why wouldn't we do business with Cuba? Let me tell you what happens. I, I, you know, to me, remember, it's, it was interesting when I was in China. Do you remember when we blew up their embassy? Yes. Yeah, okay, so I asked some, uh, some people who lived over there, I said, how did the Chinese people take to that when we blew up their embassy? And these people had lived there for 10 or 12 years. They said, well, at first they kind of gave us some steely-eyed stares a little bit initially, but they said within 24 hours all the Chinese people shrugged off and went, eh, government. You know, we got to remember something. Government thrives on creating hostilities between we the people. Look, here's the issue. During the decades of embargoes against Iran, guess the one U.S. company that was allowed to ship in oil field and nuke components, Halliburton. And then Dick Cheney got caught doing it and said, oh, well, it's no big deal. We have a subsidiary and the Caymans doing it. When you put those sanctions on them, it only allows corrupt select groups to sell the goods, and that's what these governments love. Jesse? I agree. Again, it's, uh, and you're not harming, you know, you're, when you, when you put sanctions on and all that, you're only harming the people. Do you think Fidel Castro misses a meal? Do you think somehow our sanctions make his life somehow more demanding? No. 
all you're doing is hurting the poor people of Cuba in not doing business with them and in not attempting to raise everybody's lifestyle. It's a win-win. And these embargoes are not win-wins at all. Jesse, we know the